One of the things that I love about here at PCC is that everyone is invested and is very interested in your academic success. I just love it. But I, this is what I love about PCC. My business 101 instructor was the reason why I became a business major. I found like a community I could be with, a community that could help me grow as a person and grow within education. Coming to PCC really solidified for me that I wanted to be a nurse. I just think that the gerontology um, program is just so cool and it's really changed my life. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> PCC is my home. PCC is allowing me to achieve my dream. We're not just educating students with classes. We're getting people to invest in themselves. It changed my life and not just my life because when it changed my life, it changed my parent life. It changed my entire family and the next generation life. The faith of these people and my abilities was indescribably profound. I am a future social worker because of PCC. I am a proud alumna of PCC. I am a leader because of PCC. There is no greater joy than getting to help someone who's helping themselves. And that's what community colleges do for our community. It's what PCC does for Portland. Believing in someone's dream it's something great that changes lives. Hello, I'm Jenny Hansen, and we are thrilled to be here with you celebrating Portland Community College's first ever virtual fundraiser. Uh, Longtime fan of PCC, get the catalogs all the time. They have so many cool courses that they offer. Hi, and I'm Ken Boddy, and I'm thrilled to be here to support Portland Community College. You know, they're the largest post-secondary institution in the state of Oregon, about 60,000 students, and many of the PCC students go on to not only careers in industry, but great careers at four years institutions afterwards. Yeah, nothing says love for PCC than dyeing your hair, apparently. Uh, you would not know about no, that. No, uh, if you have hair, I don't have any. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, Thomas Lauderdale and Sophia Van Trapp, longtime supporters, they do have hair. Check out how they are glamming up for tonight's event. Hello. What a surprise you're here. You know, I'm, get, I'm just getting ready for the PCC Gala. I have to plan ahead because there's so much to do between now and then. Come on in. I just love everything that PCC has to offer. It's, you know, it's the best education. It's the most democratic education uh, that one can get in this category. Uh, it's accessible. It has a diverse student body. The people who go there are actually like great students because they really want to learn. The people who teach there are fantastic because they really want to teach. <laughs> ah! Hello. <laughs> You're good for the gala. I came back from Shanghai and realized I wanted to get a degree in psychology. Here I am. All of my professors have been amazing and I've really, truly enjoyed my experience at PCC. PCC forever, get it forever. Now that was fantastic. I always wondered how they got ready for a performance. Well, now it's time to introduce our special guest, PCC's longtime fundraising ambassador and PCC alum, Misty Markham with Markham Auction Agency. She'll be here throughout the evening helping to raise funds for PCC scholarships. Thank you, Ken. And good evening, everyone. I'm Misty Markham, and I'm excited to be here raising much needed funds for PCC scholarships. With your help tonight, we aim to raise over $300,000 to provide students in need scholarships to help them succeed. I know the value of community college. I myself attended PCC years ago. We won't mention just how many. And my oldest daughter currently attends. So it's easy for me to talk about just how important PCC is in our community. PCC taught me the foundations I needed to open and operate my own local small business. Without it, who knows where I'd be? But my story is just one of many. Tonight, we're proud to share more stories of PCC's impact in our community and in people's lives. It's our hope that they inspire you to be most generous. To give, it's simple. Simply text the letters PCCF to the number 44321 at any time you're moved to give a gift. You can always give by visiting our website as well, pcc.edu slash tomorrow together. Select the donate today button and while you're there, 
follow tonight's live fundraising goal and help us get there. That's right, Misty. The PCC Foundation believes all students in our region should have access to an excellent education and the support needed to succeed. Given the increased hardships of the past year, more students than ever need scholarships to continue pursuing their dreams. Tonight, let's help make their dreams a reality. And now, please welcome the chair of the PCC Foundation Board of Directors, Karen Kerman. We've spent the last year supporting PCC students by using every lever at our disposal, all possible because of generous donors who support our mission to meet the needs of students as they strive to attain their educational goals. It's now my pleasure to introduce PCC President Mark Mitsui. President Mitsui joined the college in 2016. He came to PCC after working in the Department of Education in the Obama administration, and I'm constantly inspired by Mark's leadership and his focus on equitable student success. Hello, I'm Mark Mitsui, President of Portland Community College and my pronouns are he, him, his. While we can't be together in person, we are so grateful you can join us this evening. Even if you yourself haven't taken a class at BCC, I bet you know someone who has. 60 years ago, Amo D. Bernardis founded Portland Community College. He did it because he believed that everyone who wanted an education should have access to one. This is something that I also deeply believe in. This moment we're all in, the one that we're experiencing now has been one of the most difficult in recent history. And I've never been more proud of where I work. When the pandemic hit, PCC immediately stepped up to donate personal protective equipment from our healthcare programs, opened a COVID testing clinic, developed an online contact tracer training program and more. We needed to help because community is our middle name. Not every community has been impacted by this pandemic in the same way. Throughout this year of cascading crises, we've been reminded of the many inequities that make up our society. Communities of color have been most affected as the education gap has become even wider. Eduardo Padron, former president of Miami-Dade College once said, Talent is universal, but opportunity is not. As we look toward a post-pandemic future, we can't go back to life as it was. And at the same time, we need to double down on why we exist in the first place. PCC's mission of equity and opportunity has never been more critical. The skills needed to revitalize our communities will require us all to boldly reimagine like we've never done before, and PCC is already taking on this challenge. PCC has had an awesome 60 years, and we can't wait for the next 60. Tonight, we're excited to be raising money for scholarships to support our current and future changemakers, creators, dreamers, healers, builders, and more. With your support, I have no doubt that we'll reach tomorrow together. Thank you. really scary once COVID hit because I ended up losing both of my jobs which was very difficult for me and I ended up surviving on about $24 a week. When shutdown happened I was trying to finish finals and then I ended up losing my jobs. I pay out of pocket and it kind of hit me really hard knowing that I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to finish you know the next coming terms or even like my degree. It became clear that students were one flat tire away or one unexpected medical visit away from dropping out of school. The pandemic truly put me in a financially precarious situation. Surviving on $24 a week put me, my family, my future goals, the family that I'm helping in the Philippines at a huge, 
huge disadvantage. I wasn't eating right, sleeping right, so I had kind of lost myself in there. I study health and wellness and I teach this stuff, but I wasn't really doing it. We know that two-thirds of our students are food insecure. There is, there's this myth um, that we have collectively bought into that it's a rite of passage for us to, uh, to, to go to college and to eat ramen every night, right? Um, and that is food insecurity. Each campus has their own food pantry, funded and paid for by students with a partnership with the Oregon Food Bank and Portland Community College's foundation. When the pandemic hit, we had about a week to close those pantries down. So losing that service, we knew was gonna cause a major hardship for many of our students. So quickly, we came up with an idea to begin offering grocery gift cards to local grocery stores, to students who were relying most heavily on our pantry. I was able to receive a couple hundred dollars through smaller different grocery gift cards um, in order to help alleviate me and my financial stress. And even though it was only a couple hundred dollars, in my family, anything matters. I reached out to my advisors at PCC and I told them my situation. I didn't know how I was going to finish school and luckily they um, referred me to the emergency grants. So it was like something was lifted. I was like, I had hope again um, because I didn't know how I was going to get out of it. It's gut-wrenching seeing some of the messages that come to us uh, from those students that are, man, they're just over the moon with appreciation. But it's bittersweet, because for every one of those, there are 10, 15, 20, uh, some indeterminate number of people that we aren't able to help. We are continuing to hear from students that their needs are more dire than they were in the beginning. Predominantly, I am worried about finances in the future. I'm working again, but my hours are less, so my my work is really uncertain right now. We are seeing continued need uh, from our students. We are we are seeing um, a thousand applications for emergency grants in just a few weeks, and we don't have enough funds uh, to help everyone. Now more than ever, we should be supporting college students, not just at PCC but across our country, and. This is our future, and these are the students that are going to help um, our future be brighter. We can help to ensure the success of, of our students. Two-thirds of PCC students are food insecure. That is just a crazy statistic. You know, and with over 1,000 emergency grant applications received in just a few weeks, PCC students are really in need right now. That's right, and you can help. Support vulnerable students who've been most impacted by the pandemic. Your investment right now helps students stay in school and focus on their studies instead of where their next meal might come from. Help us do just that. Tonight's first formal level of giving is at $500. And a $500 gift can assist students in need with emergency relief funding to cover acute needs like food, unexpected bills, rent, and medical expenses. Yeah, you heard it from Addie. Support from PCC gave her hope again. Let's show students that we do indeed support them. It will take all of us. Every dollar, every gift makes a huge impact in the lives of PCC students. Absolutely right, Jenny. And to be the change you wish to see in the world right now, text the letters PCCF to the number 44321 right now. You can always give at any time by visiting our website pcc.edu slash tomorrow together. Just click the donate button. PCC students are impacting our communities too. This past year of civil unrest and continued strife has reminded us that we need to make sure tomorrow works for everyone. Next, let's hear from some PCC students and alumni who are committed to making change in our community. Hi friends, my name is Latoya Lovely, and I have been pushed and pulled and stretched during this pandemic and given the most amazing opportunity to work with beautiful artists in collaboration on the Miso Mural. 
this is Jamesy, my son and I, in front of our mural that we collaborated on for Miso with a group of absolutely amazing artists who helped me to grow as an artist. It's beautiful and humbling to speak through my paintbrush. I am telling my community how much I value them and how much I value myself. And I'm sharing with my son that we are wondrous and that our faces will be seen and our voices heard. And because art connects us in its own magical way, I'm able to share my story with someone who may feel that they are not a part of the journey or the movement. And in doing so, they feel a connection and gain an understanding and that is a part of social change. My name is Cameron Witten. My pronouns are all of them. And I am a proud alum of Portland Community College. And I'm the CEO and founder of racial justice nonprofit Brown Hope and co-founder of the Black Resilience Fund. And it is my honor and my privilege to be spending some time with three amazing souls who have been touched by PCC. And so please, uh, we'd love for you three to introduce yourselves. Hi everyone, my name is Charlie Love and my pronouns are she, her, or they, them. Hi, my name is Hannah Alsko, my pronouns are she, they. Uh, my name is Eddie Bolaños, uh, my pronouns are he, him, and él. If all three of you could just talk for a moment about some cause or social justice issue that you are passionate about and are working on today. Personally, what I'm working towards is liberation, which I know is very broad, but it's really kind of seeking whatever means possible to contribute to the collective liberation of folks globally that have been colonized. Living in the U.S. as a Palestinian, I feel like this is what I can do to help because all of our struggles are interconnected. I cannot continue my work in educational justice and immigrant justice without taking into account that Black lives are being lost day in and day out in this country. And the work that I do encourages me to fight for Black Lives Matters as an ally, right? As an ally, because Black issues are immigrant issues, because Black issues are student issues, because Black issues are queer issues, and we cannot ignore it. I echo both what Hannah and what Eddie said um, in that Black lives matter and liberation is the end all be all. Black lives won't matter until Black trans lives matter. I am a transgender woman or transgender feminine person. I do consider myself non-binary. And I also live with disabilities. So my focus in my activist work is on improving uh, the health and lives of folks like me. So here we are at an event for and with PCC. So I'm curious if y'all could tell me a little bit about what role PCC has played in your journey so far. I'm an undocumented student and I had a counselor who, who helped me at my high school uh, it, with enrolling into PCC, but also registering for a scholarship from PCC called Future Connect, which is a scholarship for low-income first-generation students. And it was through Future Connect that I, that I was able to connect with other groups um, and then eventually working uh, to establish the, the Dreamers Gala and the Dreamers Resource Center at Rock Creek. What makes you proud to be an activist? One of my favorite quotes is that every breath a trans person takes is an act of revolution. So keep breathing. And in this country, in this day and age, you can't be a transgender person without having your life politicized in some way. For me, what makes me proud is, you know, that flag right there, that transgender flag makes me proud. What honestly makes me proud to participate in movement building is that it's a long-term goal and it's a long-term building that you may not see necessarily um, the end result. And I guess that kind of makes me proud to participate in it because it reaffirms my values. Like, yes, I am. I'm here for the long haul. I'm here because I want better. Hannah, thank you. Your, your words remind me of 
uh, this quote I just love from uh, Jennifer Granholm, who said, sometimes leadership is planting trees under whose shade you'll never sit. What do you think America or the world learned about social justice in the past year? This year, what I've learned is that if you interact with your community, you can build amazing things to help each other. And so around Transgender Day of Remembrance, I set about to have a COVID testing event specifically for queer and trans folks. And it was incredible to see how so many different organizations came together to serve our community. So I'm wondering what makes you most hopeful for our collective future? The telling of stories, I think in the passing down of those, I think that's the only thing that is stronger than what a lot of these oppressive systems are meant to do, which is to erase and to forget. For me, what makes me most hopeful is knowing that people like you and our counterparts here with us will continue to work together to affect substantive change. Wow. Eddie, Charlie, and Henna, I just gotta say thank you all for this precious time that we just had together. I wanna give a shout out to this treasured institution that is the thread that has brought us together, and that is our Portland Community College. Thank you for being such a powerful part of our lives and for bringing us together for this important conversation. So together, let us continue to learn and continue to turn our love into action. For our next segment, I'm excited to introduce you to a student who came back to PCC as a mother of eight. She ended up receiving her doctorate in nursing at OHSU. This past year, OHSU has been a key organization in the efforts in addressing the greatest health crisis in my lifetime. Our healthcare workers of all levels stepped up to serve the needs of Oregonians. I've never been more proud of being in healthcare and I've never been more proud of supporting PCC. My mom is a superhero. She did a better job parenting as one than most other parents do as two. She knew that in order for things to work for us, she's gonna have to go back in an education. That first day I went to class, I walked in crying basically and put my hand on the biology room door. I was like, I'm gonna go in here. If I'm going to leave, it's gonna be because I'm gonna leave if I fail but I wasn't gonna leave because I didn't try. When my husband left, he took the paycheck with him. And so I was single with eight children without an education. So it was an immediate, how do I put food on the table? Our electric bill was due. Um, it, was, it was very scary. I literally sat in my living room and watched the flashing one light in Vernonia and thought about what am I going to do now. And I made a list of what pros and cons looked like and PCC was the top of that list. And sitting there thinking about the future of my children, I had five daughters and so I really wanted to set that bar high for them that they needed to have an education. And for my sons, I wanted them to see that their mom was a strong, competent woman. She's the most amazing person I know. She works harder than anybody else. The thing that makes me most proud about my mom is that she went back to, to school. I had always been interested in medicine. 
I was gonna get a two-year nursing degree. That was my goal. But as I started at PCC, I started to see that there would be other opportunities for me that I, I hadn't thought of. And I had a lab instructor that challenged me to start taking more classes. She took time after class one day and said, you can do more than you think you're doing. Just take an extra class, take an extra two classes. I think you can do it. I think you'd be wasted here if you don't go on and get a bachelor's or master's and think about a doctorate and say, I think you've got it. My mom was able to be in school and still have her kids as a priority. She managed to become a doctor in seven years. Providing for my family, there were a lot of different people and organizations involved. Many of them came from PCC directly from the Women's Resource Center by scholarships, food baskets. I never went without because my mom always found a way to provide. Without those scholarships that PCC offered for the foundation, I couldn't have continued on my education. I didn't give up because PCC was invested in me. She's a doctor, and she's probably, arguably, one of the best doctors, I'd say. Now, I'm a nurse practitioner with a doctorate, so a doctor of nursing practice, um, and I'm the associate medical director for Virginia Garcia for our school-based health centers. She influenced me to follow my dreams and what I want to do. When you're left with very meager income, the statistics say that my children shouldn't have graduated high school. Most of them shouldn't have gone to college and they should be working dead end jobs, and so should I. But that is not what happened here because there was investment. Sunday dinner is priceless because we get to catch up on each other's lives and share a meal and talk about our successes. We've been tried and we've been pushed and we've been pulled and uh, we've struggled, but no matter what, we come together as a family on Sunday and we share that time, we share that meal. Because of PCC, my single mother of eight children has successfully gotten all eight of us either completing a college degree four year or on the way to completing it. And none of us would have been able to do it without the stepping stone of PCC. I think my kids, you know, turned out pretty good and they're happy and they are all, they're all gone to PCC and two of them work there. There's no way to thank those donors enough because what they did was they invested in a whole generation of people here in this house that are going forward and adding to the communities out there. Like so many other women, moms are bearing the brunt of this pandemic and PCC stands with them to lend a hand. Help them do it. Now is your moment, people. Make lasting impact in our community and support PCC students with scholarships. If you feel so compelled, please give a gift at our next level of $5,000. A tax-deductible gift of $5,000 can help cover tuition, fees, books for a student for an entire year. What a worthwhile investment. While we'll put gifts of any size to great use, $5,000 really can change someone's life. To give, text the letters PCCF to the number 44321 at any time. You can always give by visiting our website as well, pcc.edu slash tomorrow together. The pandemic has isolated us and kept us from the communities that we had built before. We miss seeing theater and music and dance and that is what connects us to our better selves. And now, we all dance. Hi, welcome to the dance portion of the evening. My name is DJ Anjali. We're gonna be doing a Bhangra dance lesson. Bhangra is a folk dance from North India and Pakistan, and it's pretty high energy. You've probably seen it in a Bollywood film. So, we're gonna be dancing to Reshami Dupatha by Ravi Sandhu and Ashok Gill and I want to shout out my DJ, The Incredible Kid. So Bhangra is actually a harvest dance and currently millions of farmers are protesting in India right now and we stand in solidarity with them. Kisan Ekta Zindabad. All right, so time to get loose, time to get up on your feet because we're going to do some dancing. The kind of basic Bhangra step is just back and forth, like shifting your weight side to side. So we're going to pull in at the elbow like this 
And this is like basic, basic fungra pulling in at the elbow. Yep. <laughs> so it's a harvest dance, so I call these hands throwing the seeds. You're literally tossing some seeds. Let's try it with the song. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, wait. <laughs> Misty Jenny, that was really fun. But now we've got a special message from former Senator Margaret Carter that everybody should hear. PCC has been a haven of support for students. All of you that are here tonight being generous in your contributions, I personally thank you for that. I, as a former member of the faculty at PCC, as a person who continues to support what they do, I love this institution. And I hope you will join me in loving it as well by giving some money and giving generously for the future of Oregon. Thank you for being here tonight and I hope you're having a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Rebecca Sklut. I am the author of The Immortal Life of Henry Lax, and I'm, I'm a science writer. And I took my very first writing class at PCC. And the other class that I took at that same time at PCC was a biology class. And in that classroom, my teacher, Mr. Deffler, mentioned the name Henry Lax. Um, and it was the first time I had ever heard of her. And he told us about her cells which were called HeLa cells, and they were the first immortal cells ever grown in culture, the first cells grown outside the body. And they changed medicine in all kinds of amazing ways. They used to develop the polio vaccine, and they went up in the first space missions. 
They were used to create some of our most important cancer medications. And he told us all about this in our biology class. And then he wrote her name on the board, said Henrietta Lacks, and she said she was a black woman and nobody knew anything else about her. Um, so when I went up to Mr. Deffler after class and I asked him about these cells and about Henrietta and who was she, he, he pushed me to go answer my own questions and to go just explore and follow my curiosity wherever it might lead me. And of course, he could not have imagined that it would lead me to, you know, 30 years later, <laughs> um, having published a book about her and, it, you know, that moment just changed my life. I love PCC and I, uh, I owe a lot of the good that has happened in my life to the fact that I started off there. I'm honored to be a part of this event, Tomorrow Together. I attended PCC on multiple occasions. Prior to the fire service, I attended in the summer of 1988 and 1991. In addition, Portland Fire and Rescue partnered with PCC to incorporate their EMT basic curriculum into Portland Fire and Rescue's first apprenticeship academy program for new hires. During college, I took several classes there, but I really enjoyed the sciences, biology, anatomy and physiology, and emergency medical services. My instructors had a passion for the material which was so infectious that I fell in love with learning. Each morning, as I'd jump on the bus to the Sylvania campus, I looked forward to class and learning with my peers who were a cross-representation of Portland. I loved the hometown vibe. When I got home, I'd eat, run, dive into my homework with the same amount of enthusiasm, knowing I was working towards a career that one day would impact others. Honestly, it was the first time in my life that I had truly enjoyed school. Looking back, I can see why my mother enjoyed working at PCC for close to 30 years. When she was working, my mom enrolled my brother and me in PCC's daycare. For me, returning to PCC as a college student was like coming home to a place that was safe, familiar, and encouraged me to reach my full potential. Like so many in Portland, I'm proud to be a PCC alumni. What an incredible community who understands the value of education. Now, our next level of giving is $2,500. And at this level, the first six gifts will be matched one-to-one, -one, thanks to the generosity of the PCC Foundation Board of Directors, David Chen and Rakaya Adams, Mike Gentry, and Afton Walsh of Walsh Construction. This generous match effectively doubles your impact right now and turns your $2,500 into $5,000 for PCC students. Students. To give your gift, text PCCF to the number 44321 right now, or give by visiting our website, pcc.edu slash tomorrow together. And a huge thanks to Kali Thorne Ladd and Billy Ladd for supporting students with a $2,500 gift. Thank you so much. Thank you to PCC retiree Barbara Raznu as well for her generosity at this level. Thank you. $2,500 goes a really long way. Yeah. It could provide two students with scholarships and laptops to learn remotely at PCC. It is a worthy investment. Indeed. And now, Jenny, I think you'll particularly like this next segment. I know from your work, you're always busy writing news stories. I am always busy writing news stories. It uh, doesn't leave a lot of room for creativity, <laughs> though. And we want to hear from some creators about what they've been up to. Hello, my name is Matthew Dickman, and I'm an internationally published poet based here in Portland, Oregon. I'm also a proud alum of Portland Community College. The writing community at PCC is a deeply special one. It is also special to me personally because it was the starting point of my writing career. It was the place that I got interested in poetry and where I got support and encouragement uh, to write poems. The students are there because they love writing. 
its love and its curiosity, and it's just, um, it's just an enjoyment uh, of language. My name is Mitchell Jackson, and I'm a proud Portland Community College alumnus. Um, I'm a writer, and I write because uh, I want to leave a record of home, of the place where I come from, of the people, of its history, and I also want to make beauty of it. It feels like it gives my life a purpose and it's there's that Zen moment when you're just sitting there and you, there's no more you, there's just the piece that you're working on and it's just, just such a beautiful feeling. Part of writing is just getting to hear everyone else's writing and you take bits and pieces of that with you when you hear them perform. For me, every time that I meet a new person, my writing changes for the better. And I thank PCC for that, 100%. It's a group of people just really involved, kind of with their lives depending on it almost. You have the sense that it's, it, there's real uh, traction there, there's real meaning there. Um, and we're working together to figure things out through writing to see what we can do in writing. They know what it means to work hard and they know what it means to suffer and they know what it means to um, stand up for yourself, to fight for yourself. And their writing shines with that authenticity. I didn't have a lot of queer and trans representation growing up and I want to be able to create that kind of literature that I needed when I was a kid. PCC has made me feel more grounded and more comfortable calling myself a poet. PCC has played a role in my writing career by supporting me, by inspiring me um, at a time when I wasn't sure if I was going to continue on in school. PCC was a part of the reason um, why I decided to remain a college student. The Carolyn Moore Writer's House is uh, the largest ever gift in PCC's history. The gift included her family's 2,500 square foot log cabin down in Tigard. This is the balcony. Um, it looks over the marsh, and we hope a lot of good writing will happen here. And it will be the location of the Carolyn Moore Writing Residency, which will be a program where we bring in a series of accomplished writers from across the country to reside at the, uh, at the house and, and write. There's this beautiful, great room and we'll have small groups of students there to talk with the writers. The community is everything. Um, and so for me, this sounds like exactly the place that writers need to, um, to find each other. No other community college in the country has this kind of program. And we're providing access to these students that don't otherwise have access to the national literary scene. Portland is such a literary city. It's such an artistic city. And it has a great legacy of, of being connected to the arts, to the literary arts. Um, and I think that this program is going to fit really well into our, into our city. We need writing and we need storytelling so that we can have that shared narrative of a better future that we can all help create. U.S. Poet Laureate Joy Harjo has said that um, when a poet writes a poem, um, they're, they're reaching into their own soul. Um, but that's also a way of, of reaching out to, to everyone. Um, the soul of everyone, she says, is, is inside of each of our souls. So writing is a way of connecting. Writing is a way of healing everyone through healing ourselves. When people decide to come back to college, or go to college for the first time even, they're taking that step um, to reach those goals to help contribute to society in ways that they find really important, in ways that are important. But if someone takes a step and they don't have support underneath them, they're going to fall. And a lot of times that support is finances. Someone can be amazing, they can have all the potential in the world, and if you don't give them the resources to succeed, more than likely they're not going to succeed.
I think it's really important to invest in education and help support students just like me because it shows that like someone believes in you and someone cares about you succeeding. It gives you a sense of self-worth and it makes you want to continue. It is providing first generation students and students who would not otherwise have the option to go to college an option. If you have someone who wants to go to college but they don't have the resources to get them there, you could be that person who gives them those resources to get there. And you would be making a difference not only in their life and not only for society, for whatever job they go into to contribute to society, but also I think it just, I think it makes a difference for us to be able to believe in other people. As you can see, scholarships changed lives. This year, the PCC Foundation received over 2,500 scholarship applications, more than ever before. Students living through the pandemic, trying to juggle work, home, life, school, it's hard. And the last thing we want is for them to have to choose between paying rent and continuing to pursue their dreams. Let's ensure all students in need are able to receive scholarships this year. And with that, our next giving level is $1,000. And I have some incredible news. Ann Nato Campbell, PCC supporter and community builder, who you'll hear from a bit later, believes that PCC students deserve a stronger tomorrow. She'll be matching our first 10 gifts at $1,000 right now. This turns your $1,000 into $2,000 of impact for PCC students. Who will join Ann right now with a $1,000 gift and make more scholarships possible for students. I'd like to say thank you to PCC Foundation Board Member Francoise Bordenac for your $1,000 donation. Thank you so much. Join her folks by texting the letters PCCF to 44321 or heading to our website pcc.edu slash tomorrow together. Hey, Jenny, did you know that PCC has more than 90 different programs? What? I did not know that. Yeah, they've got everything from dentistry to music and sonic arts to welding and so much more. You know, I really had no idea. You know what else I didn't know about PCC? They have a farm on the Rock Creek campus. Check it out. The farm fully supports the vet tech program for PCC. Yeah, seeing those animals just really made me feel good. That was awesome. You are a softy like that, yes, right? Yes, I am. Yes. Well, while we <laughs> might not have known about those adorable animals, uh, we did know PCC has long had a reputation in the community for getting students into skilled trade jobs, which is what our final segment is all about. Take a look. Over 100 years ago, my grandfather moved from a tiny village in Japan to America. I'm the third generation of the NATO family, lucky enough to invest in the growth of Portland, the city my family has called home since 1917. When the pandemic hit last spring, there were so many people affected who were just like the members of my own family. People who had worked hard and struggled to build something to achieve a dream and watched it slip away as a health crisis became an economic crisis. The training, skills, and education our city will need to recover from this crisis will be significant. That's why we, as a city, are lucky to have PCC as it helps Portlanders get back to work in family wage jobs. I'm a proud PCC donor, and I'm so excited to be part of building Portland's future. I hope you'll join me. Hey, I'm Erin, 
and I'm here with Brad, and we're in St. Helens. Brad was my first building construction and technology teacher in the BCT program. So what Brad was showing me this morning was how to set up the saw and cut these guys for this beveled edge so that when you put it up there, it gives like a nice clean look and the sheeting can kind of die into this angle with the rest of the roof. This particular project, it's just a 30 by 50 garage. This was the first building that I drew and um, had permitted. I've always had a hard time with the drafting side and, and she's really good at that. She did the drawings and she said she wanted to come and you know do the hands-on part. Being out here and seeing the sunrise and, and working with my hands and just doing something physical with myself and, and seeing it come up is really cool. You think about you've got a pile of material and you take that pile of material and you create with it. And you know, every piece of lumber in here, you know, you had to think through how long does it have to be cut? You know, where's it gonna fit? You have to have a layout for everything. And then you put it all together and you stand back and look at it and say, wow, you know, we did this. You know, Erin did most of it. <laughs> she did all the, the hard work, <laughs> the labor part. Yeah. I want students to be able to see that they can actually build something in the industry. And I would say that pretty much every student in the program uh, has that opportunity. Hey, welcome. This is the mini house. So it used to be an old garage, so in 2016, um, converted it into a living space. You're in the living room, which is where probably the most of the time is. I pull up in the corner of the couch quite a bit. So the kitchen, um, I think the appliances are probably the coolest part. This guy is a convection oven microwave, uh, which makes the best grilled cheese sandwiches you've ever had. Just if you guys want one, I've got the fixings. You save so much space if you don't put um, wallboard on top of the studs. This is the office right now, but later on, it's the bedroom. I was sort of in um, a corporate job that was taking quite a bit of my daily life. Um, and then during that, I started building this mini house and just sort of envisioning a smaller life. And as I got more and more in it, I definitely knew um, I needed to change up more of my lifestyle. So I went to the architecture program first at PCC, um, just to sort of get an idea for like design. And I mostly just wanted to finish my house, but eventually I got so into it that I'm hoping to make a career out of it. PCC and the classmates that I met and the teachers that were mentoring me through all the programs, it's hard not to call it life-changing. I do feel like with the skills that PCC is giving us as students, like we're super enabled to go out and help build Portland. It's a cool community and people are invested. I'm proud to be a part of that. What a beautiful, tiny home. You know, PCC continues to give students the tools to build our region and keep our economy thriving even during a pandemic. You know, last spring, PCC transitioned thousands of classes online, even construction classes. But not every student has a computer to be able to continue taking online classes. With support from the PCC Foundation, over 850 laptops were quickly distributed to students in need. But there are so many more students who are still in need of a way to attend their classes remotely. A gift at our next level of $250 can provide a student with a laptop to continue their education. To inspire non-stop giving at this $250 level, our longtime community partner, the Working Waterfront Coalition, has agreed to match the first 40, count them, 40 $250 gifts right now, doubling your impact to 500. So please give as generously as you can. And to do so, you know the drill. Text PCCF to the numbers 44321 or visit our website, pcc.edu slash tomorrow together. We wouldn't be here tonight without the generous support of sponsors, especially our presenting sponsor, Comcast. Thanks for helping us get through the pandemic. We couldn't do it without your internet.
People love the Oregon Southwest Washington area. The people of the region feel a connection to each other. And at Comcast, connectivity is at the core of what we do. For years, the Hispanic community has been waiting for remote control that we can talk to in both Spanish and English. And now we have one, which is gracias Comcast. Comcast also invests in the local community in a variety of ways and is helping our neighbors fully participate in the digital economy. We take our role as a good corporate citizen seriously. Staying connected to customers and our community here in Oregon and Southwest Washington, along with continuing to transform the customer experience is vital to the future of Comcast. At Comcast, we connect people to what matters most. And now, onto our final formal level of giving, $100. $100 can cover the cost of a student's internet for an entire year through Comcast's Internet Essentials Program. Just think, if you and a friend both give 50 bucks, that's providing internet for a student for an entire year. And as an added incentive, make your donation of $100 before midnight tonight, and you'll be entered to win one of PCC's Tomorrow Together swag bags. It's full of wine, there's gourmet popcorn, there's a plant, gardening gloves, and a PCC face mask. How fun! Thank you once again to all of our sponsors and supporters. Your gifts help make a brighter tomorrow for so many PCC students who will have critical roles in reimagining and rebuilding our region. To give your gift in any amount, text PCCF to 44321 right now or donate via pcc.edu slash tomorrow together. Be sure to check our website to see just how generous you've been and to see what tonight's total giving tally is. Thank you to all of you who've given so far. And for those of you who have not, please consider a tax deductible donation to Portland Community College to support students right now. This concludes tonight's program. We're so glad you all decided to spend time with us on a Saturday night raising money for PCC students and scholarships. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for your support of PCC and for joining us this evening. We hope that you had a great night. We know we did. We want to leave you now with uh, the amazing Julianne Johnson and her original song, Tomorrow Together. Everybody here. Together.